G'day everyone. Uh, today I'm going to set up the speedo. I wasn't going to bother with this video, but I've had a uh, request to go over the wiring um, for the speedo. Now I don't claim to be an expert on this stuff, um, but this is the way I did it and it works. So I'll take you through that now. All right, so this is the speedo I've got. It's a Daytona Valona 80 millimeter speedo and tachometer. All right, so it's got a generic engine warning light, which I haven't hooked up because I don't have any engine warning sensors. It's also got a neutral indicator light you can see there. It's got a high beam indicator, and it's also got uh, left and right turn signal indicators. Okay, so seeing as this is an electronic speedo, it also needs an electronic speed signal. Um, there's two ways I could have gone about this. One was a magnet and a pickup, and the other one, which is the one I ultimately chose, uh, was just to get a electronic pulse converter. All right, so this is a 12 mil female thread electronic pulse converter, and all it does is it converts the spinning motion from the speedo drive into an electronic pulse, which uh, then drives the speedo. This is what came with the pulse converter. Nice and simple, basically you've got your 12 mil female thread that screws straight to the uh, the original speedo drive and out of that you've got three wires you've got your red which is power yellow which is the speed pulse signal output and black which is ground all right installation instructions um, they go over your basic cautions your product features and your components quickly on the components you get the gauge itself you get a bunch of wiring with connectors already attached and you get a mount. Now I didn't use this mount because it would have mounted it way too high. So I fabricated my own. I'll see if I can throw up a link to that video. All right, and then into the installation instructions themselves. So on the first one, you've got red, which is accessory power. So you take accessory power straight from the ignition switch into an inline fuse. That then splits into two and connects to both the gauge and the speed, uh, the pulse converter. All right, to find accessory power from your ignition switch, select volts DC on your multimeter, ground the black side, and with your battery hooked up in your bike, test each wire, and you wanna make sure that they've got, the accessory power has 12 volts in all key positions except off. So there's key position one, I've got 12.4 volts. Key position two, 12.41 volts. So that's accessory power. Then you've got black, which is earth. Now for earth, I've just got a common wire straight from battery negative that goes uh, over the whole bike and I spliced in um, the black wire to that so I can earth the gauge. White is your speed pulse, and that connects straight to the speed pulse from your pulse converter. Yellow is your RPM pulse. You take the yellow wire, you wrap it around the spark plug wire five times, then tape it, and that'll sense every time that this coil fires. Blue and green are mode and set, and they go to an optional uh, remote switch, which I don't have, so they're blanked off. On the other pack of wires, you've got black, which is your warning indicator. I don't have an oil pressure sensor on this bike, so I haven't connected that, but that switches on the negative, which makes it nice and easy. So if I did have one, it would just be one single wire from the oil pressure sensor to the black wire on the gauge, and it would work. White is your turn signal right, that's positive. So to get that to work, you just splice in a wire to the power wire on the indicator and connect it to this connector here. And then that will flash when your indicator flashes. Same, same for the green, which is your turn signal indicator left. Blue is your high beam indicator. That's also positive. So all you need to do there is splice that wire onto the high beam power wire. Brown, is your neutral indicator, and that's negative. This is your neutral indicator sensor, and all it is is basically a switch that switches ground on and off. 
So the way it works is the uh, indicator light in the gauge has power at all times. The other side is connected to this, and when you select neutral, it connects it to ground, completing the circuit, turning the light on. So it makes it nice and easy. All you need is one wire directly from this sensor or from this switch straight to the brown wire on the gauge and it'll work. All right, so here we've got the setup instructions. Um, so when we turn it on, it's in normal mode. And this bit here just runs us through how to control that. So you've got like your odometer, your trip meter, how to reset that, your other trip meter, how to reset that, max speed, uh, max RPM and your voltmeter. But what we're interested in is how to set this thing up. So you press mode and set for two seconds uh, and you'll enter setup mode. All right, so in setup mode, you've got speed calibration, RPM setup and unit setup. So we'll go with speed first, hold down set for two seconds and we'll end up in speed calibration. Now there is three different options on how to do this. The first one is auto calibration mode, and that just requires you to, uh, to drive a set distance of either one kilometer or one mile, and it'll calibrate how many pulses it senses from that. The next one is speed adjust mode, and that requires you to follow someone who's doing a known speed and then um, calibrate off that. But the one we'll be using is manual mode. So in manual mode, um, you basically find out how many pulses per revolution your wheel, or sorry, your speed sensor does. Do some calculations to figure out how many of those you'll have in a kilometer and enter that value down here. All right, so it says, Enter the auto calibration mode, turn the wheel exactly 10 revolutions, the display shows the pulses per 10 revolutions, divide this value by 10. All right, so it's done 29 revolutions. I'm oh, sorry, tw it's done 29 pulses in 10 revolutions. 29 divided by 10 is 2.9. So that's 2.9 pulses per revolution. All right, so the next thing we want to do is measure the tire circumference in centimeters and divide by 10, uh, sorry, and divide by 100,000 to be kilometers. So basically we're finding the tire circumference in kilometers. All right, so I've just measured the tire circumference and it is 220 centimeters. So we'll divide that by 100,000 which equals 0 0.0022. All right, so to figure out how many pulses per kilometer revolution that we do, all we're gonna to have to do is divide the pulses per revolution by the tires circumference in kilometers. So 2.9 over 0.0022 equals 1318.18. All right, 0.18 of a pulse is not really all that much, so we'll just get rid of that. So the value we're gonna enter is 1318 pulses per kilometer.
All right, so the next thing we'll set up is the RPM setup. Okay, so within RPM setup, you've got pulses per revolution and you've also got shift up warning. So it's got a shift light on it. I don't really feel like having a shift light, so I'm just gonna set that to red line. But first we'll do pulses per revolution. All right, so for this type of bike, this is a 74 TX650 and it's a point coil ignition. So the point coil ignition models of these bikes um, only fired every cylinder when they needed to. Um, so that is one pulse per two revolutions. So every, every cylinder fired every two revolutions on the power stroke. If it was a later model electronic ignition bike, they only ran one coil and they just fired both pots at the same time. Seeing as it's a 360 degree crank, one cylinder would be on compression stroke while the other one was on exhaust stroke. So you could fire them both and it didn't matter. So for that, you would have to set it at one pulse per one revolution. It's also got two pulses per one revolution. I don't know what that'd be for. And then it's got 30 pulses per one revolution for some type of Harley. I have no idea why you'd want to do that, but hey. So yeah, we'll do that now. All right, and now for the shift. Um, these bikes, uh, the book says they redline at 7.5. Um, I think your teeth will be rattling out at 7.5 on one of these. So you probably know well before you got there, but we'll just set it to that. All right, so that's it. That was the uh, wiring description and the um, setup of the Daytona Valona 80 millimeter tack speedo. Um, I hope that helped. To the guy who actually requested this video, just to reiterate, the, um, the neutral sender light, all it is, one wire from this thing connected to the brown wire and it all should work, as long as everything else is hooked up properly. Um, but hopefully you got what you needed from that video. Um, for everyone else, Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That would really help me out. And uh, with any amount of luck, I'll have this thing registered next week and I'll be able to take it for a ride. And, I'll, and uh, I'll probably get the GoPro set up on my helmet so I can take you guys along. All right, thanks for watching.